think to make it to the very top, you've got to make sacrifices. You've got to know when to um, say no to things. I mean, I like to have fun, <laughs> you know, outside of my racing. So sometimes it's easy for me to get drawn into things with my mates, what maybe I shouldn't be doing. But, you know, I think you've definitely got to know when to say no and make sacrifices. And you've got to have serious motivation for training. So you you know your body's at its peak, and then um, you've got to have the mental stability to hold it all together on the day. Josh Bryceland is one of the world's leading downhill mountain bikers. By my race run, I know. I know every rock and route on the track, but the only variable in our sport is because it's not made out of concrete, you know, it's Mother Earth, it's liable to change, and you can come flying into a corner, and with a rut, what was gonna hold you in, and it's blown out, so you've gotta be on the ball, and you've gotta be ready to adapt at the last second. can't beat it. Like when I'm out training I'll go and ride a local track and, and I'll be with my friends and, and you know when you hit a turn well and it, it feels amazing but when you're getting timed and you do it you know against the clock and you're riding that a little bit faster than you have done before and it's all just falling into place it's incredible it really is. Transworld Sport travelled to the northwest of England to find out more about this talented 23-year-old. In 2008, Josh won the Junior World Championship, signalling his arrival on the scene. The Englishman has been a fixture in the top ten of the senior world rankings ever since. At his local bike shop in Stockport, the kid they call Rat Boy is warmly welcomed whenever he's in town. This is my favourite tool. Yeah, Josh just took it over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit more than a customer, really. So we've known him since uh, he was uh, a wee whippersnapper, really. Uh, we used to live up on the canal, uh, up near his mum and dad. And so, yeah, we've known them, uh, I think, back in the day, he used to be uh, in a wheelbarrow. And we used to have bonfires and stuff. So, yeah, going back, yeah, we've known him for a long time, and then he's always been crazy about bikes. Andy Kiffin has served as Josh's mechanic and trusted advisor from day one. For the youngster, being surrounded by a tight-knit team has been vital to his success. And the person that made that truly possible was none other than mountain bike superstar Steve Pete. In 2004, Petey spotted Josh's potential and made him part of his royal racing team of British talent. Perfect. He took me under his wing early on, which I'm still to this day really grateful for, and I've still got a great relationship with him. There's been times when he got me my first major deal and then um, there's been times I've been offered other deals for more money or this or that to move away from the syndicate or uh, move away from Steve really and I, and I can't do it like we have such a good time together you know we get on well and and he brings the best out of me he knows when I need to knuckle down or he'll, but at the same time he, he's, he knows when to have fun. Steve Pete's role in the development of Josh's career can't be underestimated after a puncture scuppered his chances at the 2007 World Juniors at his home circuit of Fort William, Josh bounced back big time in 2008. With Petey spurring him on, Riceland put in a faultless ride to take the world title in Val di Sole by a huge 7.5 seconds. It was made all the more remarkable when you consider that just one month earlier, a crash had left doctors telling Josh he wouldn't compete at the event. But when the student beat the master for the first time, it left a mixed emotion. I was 10 and he was 11. And uh, he was bitter. He was so bitter, mate, because he, you know, I'm like his son and uh, he did not like, he still doesn't, he ain't getting beat by me, but, um, it's happening a lot more these days, <laughs> but like, um, still hard for me to get my head around, to be honest, so I've beaten him.
the recent proliferation in world-class mountain bike talent emerging from the UK is part of a wider competitive cycling renaissance currently being enjoyed throughout the country. And the key ingredients are there for this to continue. The Revolution Bike Park in North Wales is one of a number of stellar circuits on Josh's doorstep. Andy Kiffin has a clear perspective on Josh's potential. You can go straight to the top and be the best. I think it's all coming together now, you know. It's getting stronger. Originally, he was a little bit skinny. Maybe didn't quite have the strength in there, you know, but uh, he's, he's definitely got himself up there. A lot more training. Yeah, I think he's, he's fast now with the strength. On his best day, he could be number one without a doubt. A stone's throw east of Josh's home lies the Peak District, an undulating area of gritstone rocks and forested hillsides. It's the perfect training location for any cyclist. Having been born and raised on a narrow boat on the canals of Cheshire, Josh has always lived an active outdoor lifestyle. And one person who encouraged that more than any other is his dad, Ian. Hey, I'm Josh. There you go. Are you kettled up? I am. <laughs> I mean, I know Josh is Josh. He's just best mate and a good, fun guy. Um, he knows how to live life to the full, and he gets a chance to express that on his push bike as well. It's been great to watch his development as a as a young boy into a man. Um, regardless of the outcome of the sport, uh, it was just good to be beside him. There you go, mate. Uh, so. I would say it's more we're peers. You know, Josh is everything from my son, should I call him that, but also my hero uh, and a great friend. Yeah, man, since I was a little kid, basically, like, my dad's always raced motocross and um, he was like my hero, you know, and it's like, I'd just spend hours just riding up and down the boatyard, just making motorbike noises. I just kept doing that and just grew a love for actually just riding a bicycle as much as a motorbike. Never far from his trusted BMX, Radboy is also an avid skateboarder and even has a penchant for going drifting in his car. A kamikaze kid by nature, Josh's love of extreme sports has led to his fair share of scrapes along the way. But it's that daredevil spirit which led to him competing in the World Cup as an elite rider aged just 17. Obviously, as a father, there is an element of worry, but I know that I have to put that to one side because the guy's having fun and he's prepared to take those risks in pursuit of where he wants to go with his goals. So um, that's up for me to deal with that. But yeah, of course, I do get worried as a father. <laughs> Ten years of, of racing is every weekend taking me somewhere. I, the devotion, I can, I can never repay to him. He comes round now and he's like, oh, have you got, have you got a hoodie or... You got his shoes or something? I'm like, mate, I can't give you enough. Like, what he's done for me is just mind blowing. And um, there's been loads of people, you know, who've contributed, but Dad's been the key player, and yeah, just very selfless. 2013 has started in promising fashion for Josh. After an extended training camp in California with his Santa Cruz team at the start of the year, he secured national podium finishes in the States and back home in the UK, and is now making his mark on the top five of the world standings. Looking forward, however, there is one clear ambition. Well, every kid's dream, you know, when you're coming up racing is obviously world champion. I, I achieved it as a junior in 2008, and that was a that was a big sort of milestone for me, and um, I'd love to do it again. Mm -hmm.